please stand for the arrival of the official party. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Cadet Connor Murphy, historian for the class of 2023 and the master's ceremonies for this evening's events. Welcome to the yearling winter weekend banquet for the Usman class of 2023. Let me begin by introducing you to our official party. The class of 2023 is honored to welcome our guest speaker, Command Sergeant Major Kenneth Kellingsworth, the Superintendent of the United States Military Academy, Lieutenant General Daryl A. Williams the Command Sergeant Major of the Military Academy, Command Sergeant Major Michael Coffey, the Commandant of the United States Corps of Cadets, Brigadier General Curtis Buzzard, the Dean of the Academic Board, Brigadier General Cindy Jeb, and the Directorate of Intercollegiate Athletics, Mr. Mike Buddy. Please remain standing for this evening's invocations and remain standing for this evening's toast. I invite you to join me in prayer if you so choose. Let us pray. God, Thank you for allowing our entire class to come together to celebrate each other's presence this evening. This past year has been challenging in many ways. Political, socioeconomic, and the viral hindrances have affected us all. Yet, our class still remains strong. We remain strong because we're still relating to one another, still holding together, and leaning on each other's shoulders in times of celebration and chaos. And tonight, we thank you for allowing us to celebrate. Let us be the strength to others in need. Let us be the strength to others who are weak and let us be the light for those that are in darkness. Until our last breath, let us lead from the front as leaders of character. In your name we pray, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please charge your classes for this evening's toast. Ladies and gentlemen, I propose a toast to the President of the United States. Pre Ladies and gentlemen, I propose a toast to the United States Army, to the Army. I propose a toast to the United States Military Academy. Class of 2023, I propose a toast to our guests. Ladies and gentlemen, please ensure your glasses are charged with water for the fallen comrades toast.
As you enter the dining room this evening, you may have noticed a small table in a place of honor. It is set for one military member to represent each of the military services. This table is our way of recognizing the members of our profession of arms who are absent from our midst. The table is small, symbolizing the frailty of one prisoner alone against their oppressors. The tablecloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their motives and answering our nation's call to arms. The chair is empty. They are missing. The napkin is black, the American color for mourning. The single red rose reminds us of the hearts of loved ones. It is tied with a yellow ribbon to symbolize the everlasting hope for a joyous reunion with those yet unaccounted for. A single candle flame represents an eternal flame for their sacrifices. The slice of lemon on the bread plate reminds us of their bitter fate. There's also salt, symbolic of the tears endured by the missing and their loved ones. The wine glass is inverted. Our distinguished comrades cannot tell us with us this night or join in our festivities. Honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, as we solemnly toast, please remain silent. To our comrades killed in action, missing in action, or prisoners of war. This concludes our fallen comrade observance. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated and enjoy your meals.
Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention. Following your meal, please don your masks. At this time, allow me to welcome to the lectern our class president, Cadet Yusuf Kaborsi. General Williams, Command Sergeant Major Coffey, General Buzzard, General Jeb, Mr. Buddy, and the class of 2023. It's an honor for me to introduce our guest speaker for this evening, Command Sergeant Major Kenneth Killingsworth. Command Sergeant Major Killingsworth is the current Command Sergeant Major of the Corps of Cadets and has distinguished himself with nearly 30 years of selfless service to his nation. Command Sergeant Major Killingsworth has held all levels of leadership at the enlisted level, from riflemen to spearheading a new Army unit as a Security Forces Assistance Brigade Command Sergeant Major. Command Sergeant Major Killingsworth has spent over 54 months deployed in combat operations in Iraq and Afghanistan. Command Sergeant Major Killingsworth has been a part of this class since the very day we entered Beast. He learned with us, grew with us, and most importantly, was there for our class every single day. Whether he was taking individual cadet needs upon himself, supporting our class at cadet field training and air assault, or taking care of the mess hall and keeping us well fed. He has been a rock for our class and it's only fitting that we celebrate this major landmark with him. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is now my great pleasure to welcome to the stage our guest speaker for this evening, Command Sergeant Major Kenneth Killingsworth. Class of 2023. <laughs> you know, as I was throwing that down there, there's like six glasses of water back here. I don't know who's is who, but it's, we'll figure it out. Um, good evening. And you know, as I was being uh, introduced tonight, I was kind of reflecting. And I remembered that General Douglas MacArthur accepted the Thayer Award and delivered the famous duty, honor, country speech in this very hall 59 years ago. More recently, General Michael Garrett, Commander of Forces Command, stood here and addressed the class of 2022 during yearly winter weekend last year. It's my utmost privilege that you all ask me to be your guest speaker tonight. Class of 2023, freedom is not free. Matter of fact, I'll share a little story with you. So about a year ago, I was in Afghanistan. General Buzzer had contacted me to interview me and many other sergeants majors to come here and be the Corps Cadet Sergeant Major. So about a week had gone by and I hadn't heard anything. So I figured I didn't get the job. And I was getting, it was really early in the morning and it was really cold, but I was getting ready to go out and link up with a team at a combat outpost in Sultan. And so I went up to the headquarters and started getting my kit together. And I started checking my email. And an email popped in from General Buzzard. So I, I opened it up and it said, hey, Sergeant Major, can you give me a call? <clears throat> so I called him and he told me, he said, hey, Sergeant Major Killingsworth, I really want you to come to West Point and be the 25th Corps Cadet Sergeant Major. And we talked a little bit and I got off the phone and I mean, I felt like a sense of pride, like you could never imagine that I was getting to come to West Point. And I walked outside and I, 
And I couldn't believe it. And I kind of said, wow, I'm going to West Point to be the Corps Cadet Sergeant Major. And then I looked around and I realized it was snowing. And it was snowing hard. And I realized I'm going to West Point and hell really is freezing over. I've told that story one other time. Um, I tell it because it's true and it's accurate. General Williams, sir. Sergeant Major Coffey. General Buzzard, sir. General Jeb. Mr. Buddy. Class of 23, the Corporals of the Corps. That's right. And finally, our friends and family watching from afar. You know, it was only about six weeks ago when we rang in the new year. <laughs> Many in the nation looked at 2021 with hope. Others looked to it as a fresh start and an opportunity to set new goals. All of that begins with reflection of who we are, who we want to be, and where we want to go professionally and personally. Over the holiday break, I recently reflected a lot with my family and friends those that have been there for me personally and professionally, and the gratitude I have for each and every one of them. Because in the end, without them, we can't do this job. We can't do this mission. We can't execute the profession of arms without those mentors, friends, and family by our side. So tonight, I'd like to extend a special thank you for the untiring support of our friends and families that could not be with us this evening, but are very much a part of our lives each and every day. So please join me in a huge round of applause for our friends and family. <laughs> Class of 2023, freedom is not free. A powerful class motto that is a reminder of the soldiers who have paid the ultimate sacrifice in defense of our country. Ronald Reagan once said that freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. The corporals of the Corps understood this early in their development as plebes, learning to live honorably and encompass that attitude in their motto and their crest, thereby starting to define the very identity of their class. <clears throat> As we begin to define our identity, we look to our leaders from the past and the present to emulate and grow along our journey, leveraging their leadership, their words and actions to cultivate who we are, who we want to be. The class of 2023 understands this, and you can hear it in their motto, freedom is not free. You can see it embedded into their class crest, the gratitude to their 50-year affiliate class specifically represented with the seven links of the chain and the three talons of the eagle. You see, mottos, crests, and creeds serve as tools which encompass a set of beliefs and values which guide one's actions. As a non-commissioned officer, I can only think of one creed better than the cadet creed. The first stanza of the cadet creed reads, as a future officer, I am committed to the values of duty, honor, and country. General MacArthur described those words as what you ought to be, what you can be, and what you will be. Those same words that are the beliefs, values, and attitudes of this great institution and are carved and granted across the ground so we will never forget. Creeds can be a powerful tool to guide the collective actions of a team. I say this as someone who's persevered to live by a life of a creed since 1995, since I was a corporal. Now, if no one was aware, I love corporals. I love the corporals of the Corps because I think they got a really tough job to do. They're right at that point in the chain of command where they're responsible for other people, they're responsible when things go wrong, and they have very little authority. But even more important than that, I think I love cor corporals because when I reflect back on it, I wasn't that great of a corporal. And I, I wasn't reminded of that until I ran across this gem of a photo. 
of a corporal who probably, like me, thought he knew be he was better than he really was. Can, can we get that photo up? Oh, anybody recognize that guy? Yeah, that right there is Cadet Corporal Curtis Buzzard. Yeah, and like me, I mean, you can see it. He definitely sees the big picture. He's got all the right answers, understands the complexity associated with every decision above him, and extremely approachable. You remember that guy, sir? Yeah, I, don't feel bad, sir. I, I remember a guy just like that, and it was me. As a matter of fact, uh, I remember memorizing and reciting the NCO Creed as a corporal in 1995. Okay, we, we can take that down now. As a, or, or we can leave it up, that's right. There we go. <laughs> as a corporal and young sergeant, I found it hard to live up to the NCO Creed every day. Reflecting back on it now, I found myself more often than not coming up short. But I also found along my leadership journey that it became easier to live by the NCO Creed over time. And it still guides my actions to this day. The NCO Creed begins, no one is more professional than I. I am a non-commissioned officer, a leader of soldiers. Like every other NCO that came before me, the NCO sitting in here tonight and participating remotely. The creed is an important part of our history, extremely important to NCOs personally, because it's a part of who we are, what we strive every day to represent, and defines our very own identity and reputation. Unique comparing identity and reputation. You see, identity is how we see ourselves, and reputation, of course, is how others see us. I use the word unique because mentors and teachers, our friends, maybe even some at this institution, have a way of pointing out areas where we need to get better, where we need to improve, where we should focus our efforts more. And even though we may not want to hear it, they tell us this because they see the potential in us. They see the potential of what we could be, the best version of ourselves. While identity is who we are now, in some cases the why behind our actions, identity also encompasses our memories, experiences, relationships, beliefs, and values we hold important. Identity and reputation are equally vital to the profession of arms to lead honorably, a profession that requires years of study and experiences to gain the practical wisdom to operate and execute in a complex environment. You see, identity and reputation inform where we are and drive where we aspire to be, much like the second stanza of the Cadet Creed. I am an aspiring member of the Army profession, dedicated to serve and earn the trust of the American people it is my duty to maintain the honor of the Corps. Trust of the American people is extremely important and can never be taken for granted. Never. Because those are the families of the men and women that we will lead. Because freedom is not free. It's also important and crucial to our development journey to observe and study leaders from the past and present to guide us along our leader development journey. And yet sometimes, sometimes we don't have to look far to find an example of dedication and putting in the work to earn trust. As a matter of fact, this class is loaded with young men and women dedicated to serve and maintain the honor of the Corps. Class of 23 cadets like Sam Herzog, who was awarded the Colonel Johnston Beach Award for Excellence in Psychology for Leaders, or spent his time synchronizing efforts in the S3 shop while maintaining one of the highest GPAs in the classroom last semester. Or maybe we look to Cadet Hannah Lamb, who's always present 
not only with her Spartan brothers and sisters, but across the regiment and the Corps, sharing her keen eye of photography as a quiet but powerful expression of morale. Or maybe knowing that her inspiration is her brother, who is wheelchair impaired. Still yet, maybe we looked at Cadet Christopher Mann, who grew up not too far from here in Stewartsfield, New Jersey, and led several statistical categories for yearlings on the men's basketball team while achieving the Dean's List in every semester to date. I will live above the common level of life and have the courage to choose the harder right over the easier wrong. I will live with honor and integrity, scorn and justice, and always confront substandard behavior. You know, physical courage is what most of us think about, represented in the stories and history of soldiers and leaders making a difference in some of the most difficult and gravest situations imaginable. Because freedom is not free. Like Sergeant Major Thomas Paine, who's going to come to West Point and visit with us in a few weeks, or Florent Grober, two of the U.S. Army's more recent Medal of Honor recipients, still, Another aspect of courage that cannot be underestimated is the power of moral courage. The power to intervene when you see something or someone doing something wrong, or to stand up and tell someone what you believe in. You won't have, you won't have to look hard to find examples of moral courage in the class of 2023 either. Like take Cadet Markel Broughton, for example, who stood in front of the entire Corps during a stand down day and shared a very personal story and traumatic time in his life in an effort to bring awareness to racism and arm others about the importance of being inclusive as a, being inclusive as a future leader. All the time knowing that he may meet with some ridicule. Yet another cadet, Liam Sasser, who spends a considerable amount of time tutoring other cadets in English and STEM courses, with no incentives other than the honor of helping and supporting other members of the Corps. Moral courage and honor is what great men and women are made of because freedom is not free. I will persevere through adversity and recover from failure. Probably one of my more favorite stanzas of the Cadet Creed, probably because as a leader, I can recall a lot more failures and what I learned from them than I can successes. Those words speak to resilience. They speak to attitude and the effort that we will never allow our failures to define us as an individual, a team, a class, or a unit. But we'll use it for fuel. We'll use it for fuel to inform how we'll proceed and operate in the future, using those failures as stairs as we climb to success. Like Cadet Matthew Moore, prior service infantryman who did not take no for an answer and continue to persevere to get to West Point and be a part of the class of 2023 and a member of the Long Gray Line. He now serves as a member of the Black and Gold Sandhurst team, contributing to a Patriot Games victory this year. Or maybe we looked at Cadet Brahim Murphy, who just a few years ago had no roof over his head, no place to call home, but he persevered with his coach, his friends, and his faith and he now calls the Corps his home as a member of the class of 2023 and the Army football team. I will embrace the warrior ethos and pursue excellence in everything I do. The class of 2023 was one of the first classes to return to West Point to attend summer training. Uncertainty across the nation then, uncertainty now. The debate and rhetoric of controversial issues and a pandemic may divide some, but not this class. In pursuit excellence, they did. They were the first class to shoot the new marksmanship standards during the cadet field training, which resulted in the highest expert and sharpshooter rating of any class in the last five years. After being at home for three months due to the pandemic, they still averaged a five mile run time of 41 minutes and an ACFT score average of 480. 17 combat veterans, 81 prior service cadets, 89 valedictorians, and 792 former team captains. This class is full of talent whose journey to become leaders of character has really only begun. 
I'm a future officer and a member of the Long Gray Line. The Long Gray Line. The gray line of, gray line of family rooted in values and who much is expected. And like any other family, we're going to have our highs and lows. We're going to have our good days and bad, but we can look to one another to help us through the tough times, to celebrate the good times and the successes. We never need but look to our left and our right. Because you see, when we find ourselves one day in harm's way and the day is darkest, it is those on our left and our right that we're fighting for. Because freedom is not free. So 2023, tonight we celebrate you. As you reach a milestone along your leader development journey with a little under 100 days left in this semester, I ask you to finish strong. Same performance that you've done for the last two years. Just don't count the days, but make the days count and leverage every opportunity you can. For next year, you will be the sergeants of the Corps with much more responsibility. I'll leave you tonight with this. You know, when I was a young corporal, I had a first sergeant tell me, share something with me, and I've carried it with me ever since. He said, hey, Killingsworth, follow the way you want to be followed so that you can learn to lead the way you want to be led. It's been my privilege to speak to you all tonight and the families and the class of 2023. I'm proud of each and every one of you. And you know what? You're absolutely right. Freedom is most certainly not free. Thank you. Command Sergeant Major, it is now my honor to induct you as an honorary member of the class of 2023. This is, uh, this is real cool, and I don't have a lot of room on my walls, but something's going down, so this can go up. Y'all have a good night. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand and ensure your glasses are charged for the final toast. Ladies and gentlemen, I propose a toast to the class of 2023. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, before we conclude this evening's festivities, there are several people and organizations the class would like to thank for making this evening possible. We ask that you please hold your applause until the end. Thank you to our class advisor, Lieutenant Colonel Jennifer Karam, and our class officers in charge, Major Sean Frederick and Captain Jana Burdick, for their hard work and dedication to the class of 2023. Thank you to the Directorate of Cadet Activities and the Cadet Hostess Office, who have put in countless hours to ensure that this weekend would run smoothly. Finally, a big thank you to the many other organizations that had made this evening a success. Specifically, we would like to recognize the mess hall staff for all their hard work in preparing and serving tonight's excellent meal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our yearly winter weekend banquet. Please remain standing behind your chairs until the official party is departed. Never mind. Thank you, dismiss, and enjoy the rest of the evening.